Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, a podcast on musical encounters and life. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays. I'm so happy to have a guest, so I don't have to talk the whole time. <laughs> I want to I want to welcome Gary Gebler, Hello. who is the owner of Tracks on Wax in Catonsville, Maryland. Mm -hmm. So, Gary, before we get started, I was in Catonsville. I'm walking down the street. I had something to eat, and I wander into your store, and I'm like, this is what all vinyl record stores should be oh thank I you i was i was transformed i was stressed out and i walked in and i was like i could spend the whole day in here and it just took me to another place awesome. uh, talk to me about you know your background and and how did tracks on wax come about well i started out in i think it was like around 1978 working in a record store and believe it or not my day has not changed one bit since i was 15 i think i mean <laughs> i get up i look at records i evaluate records i buy records i listen and you to get, records you, and you get paid for it <laughs> and i get paid for it you know i went to college i don't use any of that stuff but <laughs> this is this is this is the perfect job for me at least and so i started you know then just working part-time in a record store but prior to that the people who worked in record stores were like the rock stars to us, you know, because we, we had no, we couldn't meet Jimmy Page or anything, but they got the records from Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin. So we treated them like they were so cool and they were, and I'm still friends with some of those people that I met when I was 15 and they're you know, a little older than me now. And I still stay in contact with them. And so I started doing that. And then I, I got in more of a corporate situation working with uh, the music land group and Sam Goody. And I ran a whole bunch of stores for them. And then I switched over to another big conglomerate called FYE. And it got to the point with them that I was going to get fired or laid off at some point. And yeah. this was when the economy was at its worst. And so I started buying records before I even had the store. Hey, puppy. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is Mia Bella. Mia Bella, the, the music loving dog makes the appearance. <laughs> and um, so I, I um, at that point, I decided I was going to open up a record store selling nothing but vinyl. And everyone thought I was nuts and they thought it was stupid and they thought I was going to fail. I thought I was going to fail. I thought, well, I'll give it six months. I didn't even want to sign a lease. Yeah. Know? It's like, I'll yeah. give it six months. And if it takes off, that's great. If not, I'll figure it out at, at that point. And luckily, it's been a slow burn. And it, it just built and built and built. And I knew something, two things that I knew we were going to be successful. Number one, I started seeing younger people come in the store. Yep. Number two, I think in the first six, seven, eight months I was open, someone stole all my Jimi Hendrix albums. And I Good went sign. home and I was, I was so happy. I told my wife, I said, we're going to make it. Yeah. People actually want this stuff. They're, they're willing to go to jail for it. So we'll be well, okay. <laughs> and also, the other thing that's occurred over the bunch of years around vinyl is that modern bands are releasing music yes. on yeah. vinyl right so so not only is it um you know older albums there's there's releases by modern bands that recognize the value of vinyl which helps the entire industry right mm -hmm. i mean absolutely and, and that that brings in and then older people like me getting their kids into it and they're listening to modest mouse or cage the elephant or what some of the newer artists and the older people are getting into that too because it's good right <laughs> it's good stuff right. there's a lot of good music out there i'm not one of the jaded people who thinks everything happened in the 70s and everything after that is horrible right i like all kinds of stuff you know new old you know what whatever right so what 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 makes vinyl so damn good what what is it about vinyl sound well, and quality I, and artwork right as you love see, that stuff the right? liner and, notes you know, all that kind of cool stuff. And I'm not a, a snob as far as I listen to CDs, you know, I yeah. listen to digital stuff and it's like a straight line. Now a vinyl record is more like an electrocardiogram. You know, you get the high highs, you get the low lows and um, it's just a more listening experience, you know, sitting down, opening up Sergeant Pepper gatefold, looking at the pictures, taking out the lyric sheet, that type of thing. It's more of a, you're involved in it more. Well, also with vinyl and with records, the experience as you talk about 
was a, an experience of just listening to music compared to today where kids are walking down the street in the city with their headphones on. Right. They're working out. Right. They're right. Working, exactly. Right. They're driving. Right. Right. And, like it's a, uh, it's a side thing. It's a side. <laughs> um, what, what advice would you give a beginner collector? Right. Like I walked into your store and I'm like, this is awesome. I'm overwhelmed. I could spend the whole day in here, but someone just starting, right. Um, because you can see with, you know, this is my light room of concert posters. Right. I see that. As yeah. you can, you know, you built a whole inventory of vinyl, like it can get crazy fast, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's some advice for beginner collectors? Um, what I would do if I was just starting out and I talked to a lot of kids, I talk to a lot of kids all the time. And what I would do is start with the classics, you know, Beatles, Zeppelin, Stones, just start with that. But some kids come in with the pre idea of what they want. Say, so say if they want Green Day. Yeah. Which is a great group. I love them. Seen them live. Love their yeah. records. Then you talk to them about The Clash. And then you, you talk to them about, you know, the Nuggets album, you know, that Lenny K put out in the 70s, you know, with a lot of cool pre-punk psychedelic stuff. And it's so cool to see these kids just take that information in like a sponge, you know. So if they come in with Green Day, you got an avenue to go back on. If they come in with something else, Black Crows, you mentioned, you always got the Rolling Stones to turn them on to or, yeah. or something along those lines. Yeah, it's, it's like it's cool. It's like the the influences, right? Like mm -hmm. that, like like Bruce Springsteen always talks about this chain of music right. back yes. to like Elvis and, and you know, doo-wop and he. You, he, 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 it's just, just this chain. And, and you're so right. Like one of the things I love to do is find the influences of bands and also the players who played on albums and where Absolutely. they like, and I wish we could create this giant, like family tree of music to find out who played mm -hmm. where, because it would be amazing. Yeah. Um, and that's a really cool. I mean, I could see the kids like their eyes lighting up, you know, from Green Day to The Clash, right? Right. Like, yeah. That's yeah. That's great advice. And um, you know they're gonna love it. I mean, it's not like you're trying to sell some snake oil or something. You know it's gonna be great. You know? Right. Right. So let me ask you. You said you were 15 or young age. Um, why music? Like, what gravitated you to? You know, I I came according to my mother. I came out of the womb singing. You know, just la 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 you know whistling humming i always was just couldn't stay away from it i mean it was in it was inside of me yeah and you made a career out of it and yeah i couldn't like, do anything musically you know i'm not that talented and right so i wanted to be in the business yeah and when and i'm sure you've traveled like i mean i'm you, you've been in the music business what makes a great in-store experience when it comes to your store and other stores you've been to. So I was lucky enough to live in San Francisco and I right. um, I lived in the hate area and there was Amoeba Music. Mm -hmm. Amoeba Music was a shopping, it was almost like a, um, uh, uh, you know, a shopping, uh, food shopping center of music. Yeah, it was yeah. so gigantic. You could spend hours in there. You, you know, I always find that good vinyl stores are very intimate and very, um, you know, you're almost talking to gurus about, hey, what's right. this album about? Or right. what should I buy? Right. Almost right. craft beer. Right. Uh -huh. Exactly. So <laughs> so talk talk to me about the in-store experience, because your store is, you know, it felt like a musical memorabilia type environment that was very um, comforting and cool. And I'm like, what what are they playing? Right. Like, well, we'd like to think of it as walking back into 1975 you know that's the vibe when i first opened the store that's the vibe i wanted to go for you know we sell incense i keep that up front i want that incense smell i want patchouli or whatever coming waffling through we put the music outside so it you know grabs your attention as you're walking by um we wanted a place where people could just hang out and talk about music we love talking about music we talk about it 24 7 i talk about it when i get home you know, it's, it's, it's it, like I told you before, it's, it's inside of me, you know, it's nothing that I put on and take off. Yeah. And I think hopefully the love that I have inside for the music comes out to the customers and they feel that love when they're inside the store. 
And that's really what it's about. I mean, and I don't, we, we do not judge, you know, Barry Manilow. I don't care. You know, I don't yeah. care what you're listening to. I don't, I don't, we're not that, we're not the high fidelity record store owner, you know, you know, go to the mall and get that stuff. Although I do have the, the total record store uniform, the hat, yeah. beard, leather yeah, jacket. Yeah. Should put my sunglasses on to complete the <laughs> the, the stereotype. <laughs> so, from your customers, I assume you have customers. I I saw some reviews, like customers that come in from different areas of the country to buy product, and also I assume you have like every good service industry regulars that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we love them. They really did well by us during the pandemic. You know, they really supported this. You know, the the outpouring just was unbelievable and they really kept us afloat i mean we're here today because they were so cool we could have yeah. easily have folded that yeah 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 so when when um during how do you how do you gather inventory what what is it you know what is it like on the business side when you're looking at getting new stuff into the store and and what people are gravitating to is there trends over the years that you've seen where it's like Wow, man, heavy metals like the thing now. Or oh yeah, well, the big thing jazz, now is hip hop right? is is really just blowing up. I mean, it has really taken over a lot of a lot of our sales. Um, our inventory comes from the used stuff that we sell. We're in basements, crawl spaces, attics, garages. You know, people bring them to us, but we travel up and down you know, all over the place to get the records. They're getting yeah. a little harder to come back now the vinyl's making a resurgence. So with that in mind, we're selling a lot more new stuff. You know, we talked earlier about the younger people coming in and um, a lot of the new artists, like you mentioned, are putting stuff out. Now there's not, a, you don't really have a whole lot of used stuff on the new artists because they're new. Yeah, <laughs> people, are, people are keeping them. Maybe in five, 10 years, they'll start selling that stuff off. Yeah. But, um, well, they're the doing stuff, a lot of bands are doing like short runs, right? So right. they're the limited edition type stuff yes. or, or live stuff, um, right. you know, which is really cool to see. Um, and there's a market out there because I see it. I mean, like oh, my absolutely. bands, it's like you can't even get get these albums because they're sold out and mm. they're short runs. What's your favorite album of all time? That's a great question. Um, and why? <laughs> So you're going to put me on the spot, right? <laughs> well, I knew you were going to ask me eventually. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to generalize it, but anything by Bob Dylan pretty much oh. works. But, you know, blood on the tracks, right? What? If you get an album, right, as a as a as things have changed, right, as a continuous uh, experience of songs, right? Because mm -hmm. this idea of like now, right? What is an album? Right. You know, Blood on the tracks. I'm always like, who breaks up with Bob Dylan, right? <laughs> like right, he, right. he pretty much wrote an entire breakup album. And uh, to me, from an album perspective, like it just, I don't know, it just works, right? So um, so I will reverse the question. How how about you? You you've got well, lots of albums to choose from. <laughs> well, I will give you the correct answer to that question. <laughs> sergeant pepper all all day long all day i i could listen to that i told my wife if ever i'm like towards the end of my life just play yeah. that on a loop yeah. <laughs> that's but, all i want to hear well no and it's 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 uh you know you you can't argue with that because right. it's an album and a so bunch of songs that you could play today and yep. still be blown away exactly and I dylan's mean, in there too don't get me yeah. wrong i love that kind of stuff um yeah but pepper's always number one two through ten that changes every day yeah yeah <laughs> it's like it's like the uh the football uh, uh rankings <laughs> uh, exactly exactly um so let me talk to you you know when i was in the store i saw a bunch of pictures and i was mm -hmm. like, i was like wow you've really had some run-ins with artists yeah. um talk to me about your experiences working with artists or being with artists and and the kind of the meet the people you've met and you know what was it about and you know the premise of rock and roll fridays is we all have these musical experiences you are much deeper into mm -hmm. the musical experiences than most but i would love to hear a story well i can give you one that's um from my youth and it's it followed me through my adulthood 
when I was about 15, the group Genesis played about a half hour from where I grew up in a wow. very small venue. I mean, they were nothing. This is probably like 1972, 73. Um, I think they had just put out Trespass or Nursery Crime. One of the, they were hardly big at all. And so I didn't drive at the time. I got a ride there, but they dropped me off like two hours early. So I'm sitting on the curb in this like country squire, Ford country squire station wagon with wood paneling pulls up and no cases, just drums in the back and whatnot. And they, these long haired guys get out and start. So I said, Hey, can I give you a hand? And they, they said, yeah, sure. They, I said, I'm coming to the show. And I sat down in front, helped them move their stuff in. And then after it was over, I helped them move their stuff out. That was that. And so then once I got into this career that I'm in now, Peter Gabriel was touring with the um, Sledgehammer album, whatever yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was called. And so my friend and I went and saw him and he looked over at me and he goes, Gary, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he's like, I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and that, here's, that. <laughs> here's the picture to prove that oh that's awesome <laughs> that's me oh, and my friend is, mark with peter gabriel is, wow and, and i'll tell you what else he did he said here's my phone number give me a call sometime <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so i didn't but my friend called like a couple weeks later and a english lady just said you know gabriel residence and he got scared and hung up because <laughs> i said what are you going to say if you talk to him <laughs> that is awesome so that was pretty cool but in the store we've had we had like the drummer from iron maiden was in here one one afternoon he was cool um john spencer of john spencer blues explosion yeah oh he's yeah. got relatives in the area the drum you mentioned black crows the drummer from black crows his family lives in catonsville so he he comes to town every once in a while and pops in all right steve gorman wow yeah and um rock and roll hall of fame member per Professor Griff from Public Enemy, he loves the store. He he did a book signing not far from here, and he popped in. And every time he comes to town, he always comes in and says hello, and that's you know, awesome. just hangs out for a little while. So it's yeah, it's been pretty cool. Um, we've had Brandy Carlisle wore one of our shirts. That's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> hey, um, free advertising, yeah, right? Yeah, Adam Adam Derwitz of the County Crows. He grew up in Pikesville, which is about five miles from here so he comes to town his parents his grandparents still live there i believe that's awesome yeah so you, it's been a, it's been a pretty cool ride it really yeah. has well gary this has been a pleasure and uh like i say to most of my guests i'm sure you have more stories in you from the past and more in the yep. future so we'll it's, have to have we'll have to have you back on rock and roll fridays again you know what anytime all right i appreciate it thank you buddy all right <laughs>